Welcome to the Overwatch League 2023 Awards for the month of May. Any OG subs from 2019 probably remember when I made these videos way back then for every stage. It's a long forgotten classic that I'm trying to bring back with a twist. Basically how these videos work is I hand out a bunch of made up awards to certain individuals to show you where my head's at on who's been performing and catching my eye and hopefully provoke some discussion with you guys within the community. I won't go through the trouble of listing them all out because there's like over seven of them, so I encourage you to check the timestamps and pick and choose the ones you're interested in. And where I wanted to begin this video is with my MVP of the month. Just to give equal love to both regions, we'll do one for each. My West and East MVPs for the month of May are Lip and Skewed. Lip in particular feels like a no-brainer. Atlanta Rain are the best team in the league, and they pretty much have forced Sombra down everyone's throats. And where does that stem from exactly? That's right. It comes from Lip and his oppressive Sombra. He's miles ahead of literally everyone, but hey, what else is new? The Rain Sombra dive is just so vicious, and even when they're not playing dive, they still force the Lip Sombra and dominate every single time. And if you turn your focus to him, he just has this tendency to perfectly adjust and make you pay for it. He farms EMPs like nobody's business, he outsmarts you, he outplays you, and he is relentless. Lip is him. And considering that Lip is like the front runner in the MVP race for 99% of the population, this one's quite easy. What's not so easy though is the East MVP, as there's a lot of worthy candidates. MN3, Zest, Choice A1, hell, even Mag. But I'm going with my boy Skewed for this one, for the simple fact that he has definitely been the best support in APAC. There is not a single player at his position from that region matching his impact. Pretty much all other teams in the East right now, you're talking about the tanks or the DPS primarily, but Infernal shares equal spotlight in large thanks to Skewed. Skewed's been holding down the fort, largely deciding outcomes of fights with his timely cooldowns and amazing frags. It's not often where a player can stand out so easily above the flashy damage line on his team, but Skewed has done so on a regular basis so far, and without his play, Infernal don't get anywhere near where they are right now, and I refuse to believe otherwise. Otherwise. That does it for your MVPs of each region, so let's talk Rookie of the Month. And to be completely honest with you, there have not been that many standouts, in large thanks to the very tiny Rookie class. If we look into who's clearly done the most to help their teams though, it's gotta be either Sugar Free or Donghack, but for me personally, this one will go the way of Lenny. Donghack, while good, is not a full-time starter, and the team can still play without him at times just fine, so I think Sugar Free's gotta be the correct choice. His flexibility has been instrumental in helping the Titans have their most competitive season in years. Whatever is asked of him, he does it flawlessly. He started off playing a lot of Tracer and looked solid as a go-to playmaker. Then, mid-qualifiers, we're talking multiple weeks in, he's asked to swap over to Sombra for the sake of his team and does not bat an eye. He completely changes roles in the dive comp and still remains one of the most impactful players in the game at all times. Lenny time is the real deal, man. Without his reliability, I just don't think there's any way the Titans get off to such a good start. I mean, literally, this is the best start they've had in like four years. No first year player gets relied on more than Lenny right now. Man always goes above and beyond expectations and he deserves praise. Now we're shifting gears back to the MVP talks, this time with ATP's star lineup of the month. This consists of my eight top performing players of the month, all on one super team roster, so to speak. Think of it like a first team all pro in the NFL or NBA, but for a single month. The star lineup of the month is going to consist of someone in Maggot Tank, Shoe Skewed and Chao at support, and Lip MN3 and Stalker at DPS. I found all of these guys to be really impressive over the course of five weeks. Lip and Skewed are my conference MVPs, so they get a pass there, no need to explain, but with the rest of this group, they all make the cut for being superstars at their respective positions. Mag and Someone make the cut at tank for strong, versatile tank play that can take over a game when needed. This was probably expected bare minimum from Someone, as he's always been really good, he's always been super flexible, he's always been a really strong playmaker, and now he's taken another step or two forward as perhaps one of the most reliable players in the entire league. But who I wasn't quite ready for to be at this kind of level was Mag. People at the end of last year were beginning to think that he was overhyped and that his potential was a lie. From the looks of it though, 
All he truly needed was a change of scenery, as he's helped this Soul Infernal squad secure some big W's on his signature heroes. But what's arguably even more impressive is how he's held his own in general as a solo tank regardless of the composition. Mag has really surprised me, and he's arguably been the best tank in the APAC region as it currently stands, so a spot in the star lineup of the month just feels deserved if we're including the East in this and giving them proper love. And I'll even take it a step further by calling him my MVP. MVP tank of the month. Looking at DPS, along with Lip, you have Stalker and MN3 who earn their spots because of their prowess on a daily basis. Stalker, while sharing the spotlight with Lip, has done some disgusting things this year, especially on that Tracer in May. I mean, he's arguably the league's finest on both roles. He just has these nutty mechanics and so many pop-offs every single freaking game. Stalker is like the perfect counterpart to Lip. They get along so well. He just becomes so much of a problem during those games if you lose track of him. Speaking of his tracking, it has been simply divine this year, and it's terrifying just how clutch he is on the regular. The other DPS slot, just like with Tank, I thought we needed to have at least one APAC guy on there to spread the love, but the choice definitely was hard. I'd say that Choi, Zest, and MN3 were all excellent people to pick from, but I decided that MN3 was my most impactful DPS in the East during the month of May. His consistency definitely improved over the offseason because those takeover matches that we saw last year were happening more and more frequently. There's like maybe three to five different series where MN3 has been a man possessed, hitting every single big headshot during every single big team fight to keep his team in matches single-handedly. He's had so many of those freaky games that you just can't ignore him. He might be the scariest player in all of the Eastern Conference right now. Mad respect. Then there's support, which is probably the simplest equation of all. I mean, the skewed thing, if I wasn't doing APAC appreciation, you could probably sub him out with like Twilight, RuPaul, or maybe even Violet, but I feel that skewed does deserve a lot of love just because of how he's played. The other guys, though, I think they're pretty obvious locks for most of us. Shu, who I also consider to be the support MVP of the month, has been on an absolute tear. Not that it's a surprise or anything, it's just a fact. It just goes without saying that he's had his paws on more outcomes than like any other support support player in the league, maybe outside of Skewed. It feels like just about every game has him doing something ridiculous on Ana or Baptiste, and he's just been the centerpiece of Houston's success. So in my opinion, he's without a doubt the top support in the league right now. On the other side of it, I'd say that Chio has definitely been the best main support. Every single game is just a masterclass out of this guy, picking up exactly where he left off during his Dallas Field Championship year. He genuinely might be the most consistent player in the entire game across all all roles. His decision making is absolutely perfect, and has shown to be a real carry on both Brigitta and Lucio. Chio is probably the most stable player in all of Overwatch, and I can't possibly think of a better guy to be a part of the All-Pro roster. And that kind of wraps up my most valuable player types of awards, so now we can get into everyone's favorite. You know it. You love it. It's the miscellaneous category, and why not start with the most improved stuff, which can be broken up into most improved player and most improved team. Something to note though, is usually this award would be based on who's shown the most improvement compared to like the previous month, or stage, but since it's the first month of doing this, we're going to look towards who's shown the biggest strides compared to the end of last year, and where people typically rated them. For the most improved player, I'm going with a tie between Flora and Mag. I just couldn't make up my mind. I think they both deserve equal respect for what they're doing. Flora was being talked about as a below average DPS player at the end of last year on NYXL, while Mag was potentially having one of the biggest letdowns of a career in league history. And look at these guys now through one month. They're dominating. Mag is someone we already praised a lot earlier in the video, so we'll focus up on Flora, who's turned back the clock, so to speak. It seems like New York was probably the thing holding him back this entire time. He just needed to get back to basics, be on a team that isn't a mess, with a more stable environment. And the results prove it, right? Flora's been on a mission since the very first day of this season, with some of the best hitscan and sniping prowess across the entire league. Genuinely, he might be the best Hanzo in the game right now. It feels like every single game is in his control when he is feeling it, when he is hitting his shots. Flora's realizing his true potential before our very eyes, even surpassing what we saw in the rookie variant of himself. Flora's been a huge part of a top-level DPS duo, and he truly deserves a lot of 
of credit for his amazing turnaround and for helping the Justice be such a threat. Looking into most improved team, there's a lot of good candidates if you're basing it off of last year compared to right now. Charge, Infernal, NYXL, Vancouver, the list goes on. However, I'm going to be settling on the Atlanta Reign. Last year, they were a playoff team, but not by much, as the regular season was full of ups and downs, leading to just 13 wins on the entire regular season. Now here, after just one month in the present, they are 8-0. They've accumulated more than half of last year's win total in one month. That is insane. With how they're playing and their current form, they'll probably surpass this total from last year, despite having 8 less tries to do so. Atlanta Reign are a completely different beast, dominating in ways that very few teams throughout league history have ever done. That's a pretty crazy step up compared to one year prior. And as we keep things rolling, that's exactly why they're also taking home my Team of the Month award. They by far had the most impressive month of all 19 franchises, and the most interesting arguably. 8-0 with only 2 map losses and 26 tries is frankly ridiculous. It's one of the best starts and individual stages in this league's history, and what the Reign are doing is just so historically amazing that it cannot be ignored. Speaking of interesting performances, it's about time for the wildcard award. I'm talking biggest surprise of the month. This can go to a player, a team, or literally anything you want really, and it can be for a positive or negative reason. My biggest surprise in the month of May is going to be the San Francisco Shock for underperformance issues. While true that not everybody was overrating them like I did, I think we can all agree that they are still playing nowhere near their potential during this first month. A team of proper and former teammates that were winning championships together should be more. At 10th place in the West Spring qualifiers, they barely met the cutoff to make the knockouts. The last time the Shock were below 500 after 8 games was 2018. It's been a hot minute since this franchise has struggled like this, and even if you never thought of them as a title contender coming into this year, I don't think there's any world where anyone was believing they'd be below average record-wise. With all the talent they have, they should at least be at that gatekeeper level, but sadly, not even that seems possible in their current state. When you're barely scraping by against middling teams and getting blown out against all the others, you're a letdown. Plain and simple. This was supposed to be the team that offered proper help, but instead, we have a roster that's getting worse over time with no real end in sight. They're being exposed with a lot of really uncharacteristically bad mistakes and a bunch of their individuals just not playing at the usual standard. And at the current pace that they're going right now, they just might end up being the most overhyped team in league history, which again, is pretty surprising for a team led by proper. So needless to say, the San Francisco Shock being the biggest surprise of May is pretty justified. We'll leave it there though and conclude the awards video now. Because now I'm going to turn things over to you, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know your thoughts on my award choices in the comments below, and leave your own list as well. I'd love to see what you're thinking. And if you enjoyed the video, please do give it a like and subscribe for more Overwatch League content just like this.